Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Kat Meffern. Thank you so much for joining me. So this is the second stretchy flow in our Wake Up Well series. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it in the morning when you wake up, but that's what this series is all about. It's about just bringing the body into this sense of curiousness, observing, awareness, and aliveness. And that is what we are focusing on throughout these five stretchy flows. Um, please do check out my Soul Sanctuary membership. That is why I am able to bring you all of this goodness in the form of free content is because I have amazing people that are willing to subscribe to the membership. So if that's you and you wanna join our wonderful community, then please do subscribe. So we're gonna get started today down on our backs. So bringing yourself just down to lay down on your back and you can take the legs in any position that you wish. You could bring the soles of the feet together. You could just be in more of a traditional Shavasana. And bring the hands onto the belly, close the eyes. So just taking these first few moments of our practice to check in and to arrive. So taking a body scan today, let's work all the way from the tips of the toes, through the ankles, the legs, and just slowly traveling all the way up the body. Don't forget the fingers, the hands and the arms. And no need to rush, just making your way up to the crown of their head Checking in with all those parts of the body, just seeing how you're feeling today. Knowing that it is absolutely normal to feel very different day to day. And for your practice to feel different day to day. In yoga, we are so used to putting on these big expectations of what we did one day and then having to do it better the next day. So let's just let go of that and really just be here in this practice today. Checking in with the breath. Just noticing the soft inhales and exhales. Noticing the belly rise and fall beneath the hands. And then if you haven't already got your legs in this Supta Baddha Konasana variation, bring them in now. And we're gonna engage the core and those inner thigh muscles, the adductors and the hip flexors. As you inhale, draw the knees together. And then exhale, release them with control. Inhale, bringing them in. Exhale, release. One more time, inhale, bring them in. And then exhale, release. Draw both knees into the chest. And then just open out, find a happy baby. So really early on in our practice, checking in with how open the hips are feeling. And you can take a little bit of movement here if that feels good. And maybe it's all feeling super tight and achy, that's okay. Hopefully in 30 minutes it won't be feeling like that. And draw the knees into the chest. Take the arms up above the head. So the arms are on the floor all the way up above. And then the left knee is going to go down to the mat. Now, this is going to be all about your active range of movements and mobilities because we're not using the hands to guide us. You're going to start to work circles with that right knee. And you're going to really have to use the core muscles and the inner thigh muscles to bring that leg in and to keep it controlled. And then going the other way. So trying to find about three on each side. 
notice any little clonks and clicks of the hip, that's okay. And then draw that knee into the chest, keeping the arms where they are, reach that right leg up to the sky. Start to make rotations with the right ankle. And then going the other way. And then just allow that right leg, keeping it straight, just to draw its way towards you without using the hands. No hands, no strap. You're just noticing where that leg goes. And I want you to keep, stay active here. So the leg is straight. My quads are switched on. My hamstrings are switched on. And I'm just drawing my leg towards my body a little bit more. And it doesn't matter if your leg's here. That's okay. You don't have to have your leg where mine is. And now the option to bend that knee or keep it straight, you're gonna take that leg out to the side. Now, you wanna make sure that you're really activating through these core muscles because you wanna keep that left bum cheek and hip bone grounding down. So the inner thigh muscles are actually working pretty hard here. Stay connected to the breath. And then a big, big breath and bring it all the way back to center. Really nice. Draw the right knee into the chest. And then bring, so keep the right leg bent. Um, yep, yeah, right leg bent and left leg straight. You're going to see if you can take a couple of rocks like this and bring it up to seated. Okay, so we're in a seated position. Sole of the right foot is gonna to come to the inside of the left thigh, Janu Shishasana. Inhale, find some length, and now we're stretching over the left leg. So this is gonna feel new because we've opened up through the right by lying back, and now we're opening into the left in a forward fold. Let's pulsate here, inhale, find length. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Take an extra breath down in the fold. And then bring it all the way up. You're going to open this right knee out, so you've just got these open hips. Place the right hand down next to the right bum cheek. Inhale, sweep the arms up, push the hips forwards, hips and heart. Lift up to the sky. It's one of my favorite stretches to do in the morning. I just feel it's like a big, nice yawn. Holding here. And then start to lower the bottom, bend the left leg and start to sink the body towards the left leg. You're gonna to wanna to move that right hand and then left hand onto the left knee as you start to open. So you're getting this nice stretch through the groin here. As you open, you can lift the chest as well. Gaze up to the sky. If you wanna take it a little deeper, you can come onto the toes and really lift the bottom off and work deep into those hips. It might be a little bit too early for that, so no worries if it is. And then lifting up through that right hand, come to frame the left foot at the top of the mat, step it all the way back to a low lunge on the left side. So the left foot's in front, back knee is down. Inhale, reach the arms up. And then exhale, shift back, find Ardha Hanumanasana. Really nice long breaths here as we move between the two. So inhale, come forwards. You can reach the arms up if you wish. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale, coming forwards. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, forwards. Exhale, take it back. One more time, inhale forwards. Exhale, take it back. And then can you come to sit on that right heel? So that right heel is in that uncomfortable 
but comfortable. Little kind of nook underneath the bottom. Inhale, lift through the chest here, and then exhale, walk those hands forwards. If this is too much on the knee, just bring it out and you can come to a Janu Shoshasana again. No worries. So entirely up to you. Or you could place the foot by the side, but you might find that's just as much pressure. And then walking the hands up, bring the right leg all the way around and bring yourself back down onto your mat. Hug the knees into the chest. And then you're gonna take the arms up above the head again, right foot goes all the way down long to the mat and we start to make those rotations through the left leg. So three going in each direction, remember working with control. And going the other way. Yeah, and when you're done, that left leg goes up into the sky and we take the rotations of the ankle again, going in both directions. Anyone else find it harder to do one side than the other when it comes to rotations? This one's very clunky for me. Okay, keep the arms where they are and you're going to start to activate this left leg as you draw it towards your body. So this is an active stretch here. Keep with the breath. Those, those core muscles are engaged, the core belly button drawing down into the mat. Now, as you open that left leg out to the side, remember you can have a bent leg, you're gonna open it out to the side and you wanna keep this right hip bone and bum cheek grounding down into the mat. I'm gonna have to rest my leg on a plant pot, which is technically cheating, so don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> Try and hold it, I'll hover it off, I'll do the work. Breathing here. And then inhale, bringing that left leg back to center. Beautiful. Now bend in the right knee and start to rock your way all the way up and come to, how have I managed that? Have I done the wrong leg? I'm sure I haven't. Anyway, we should be on Janusz Shashasana on the left side, sole of the left foot. I think I might have maybe missed something out, so apologize. Um, apologies from me. So <laughs> left leg is coming out to the side. We're in our Janusz Shashasana. Inhale, reach, lengthen through the chest. Exhale, forward fold. And then let's pulsate here. Inhale, find length. Exhale. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, inhale, exhale. One more time, inhale, and then exhale, hold the fold. And then lifting all the way up. Now we're gonna open out that right, that left leg, sorry. Left hand comes behind you. Inhale, sweep the arm up, hips and heart lift high up to the sky. Big stretch through the hips, but also through the heart center as well, through the side body. And then come to sit back on that left heel, bend through the right. You can bring this right foot in, right hand onto the right knee and just push a little bit of pressure opening out here. And you can lift the hips, the heart if you wish. You can make it even bigger. Or you can just lift the heart and the gaze up to the sky. Now start to shift yourself all the way forwards. We come to the right side low lunge now. Step it back, drop the back knee down. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, Ardha Hanumanasana. Inhale, bring it forwards. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, forwards. Nice long breaths here. Exhale back. 
Two more times. Inhale forwards. Exhale back. Inhale forwards. And then this time, exhale back and then come to sit back on the heel or you can place the foot to the side or you can bring it back to the Janu Shishasana. Inhale, find some length. Exhale, take a fold here. Always staying connected to the breath. And on an inhale, lifting all the way up. Now, rather than bringing yourself back to the floor, we're going to shift our weight forwards, place the hands down and make our way into a downward facing dog. So your first one of the practice, check in with the legs. Check in with the lengthening through the spine, taking any little wiggles that you might need here. And really open through the feet as well. It can really slowly start to work through the whole sole of the foot. Nice big bends through the knees. On an inhale, shift the shoulders forwards, find a plank. And then you're going to step the right foot to the outside of the right hand. Now drop the back knee down, find lizard, untuck the back toes. To begin with, stay up on the hands, lift the chest. You can place a block down in front of you if you need to get a little bit more height here. And you're just going to softly, gently move side to side. And then if and when, only if and when, it feels good too. You could maybe come down to the forearms and just take that lizard a little bit deeper. Again, still finding that gentle bit of movement. And then maybe opening this right hand up to the right knee, gazing to the sky. And if you're opening through that right knee, just be mindful that the ankle doesn't collapse. You want to keep that line through the big toe, or well, the long toe, <laughs> the middle toe, all the way up through the knee joint as we lift the chest. Still finding that gentle bit of movement. And then releasing those hands down. So place the hands down. Tuck under the back toes. And then you're going to bring this right knee in for an active pigeon. So active pigeon looks a little something like this. See, I've got my back knee off. So I'm not deep into my pigeon like I would normally go. But I'm active here. Lifting up through the core. Reach the arms up to the sky. You can take Kali Mudra in the hands if you wish. It kind of gives me like this sense of empowerment, like, yes, I can stay here. So super active through this position. Keep reaching, lifting up. One more breath. And then release those hands down. Take it all the way back to a three-leg dog. So the right leg goes up to the sky. You can bend that top knee. And take some rotations with the hips here. So the knee working round in circles. Notice how it activates the core muscles as you bring it in. Going the other direction. And then slowly shift forwards, bring the right knee to the right wrist, and we're coming down for full pigeon. So release the back toes, take any blocks or bolsters or anything that you might want under that right hip. Inhale, find length. Exhale, take a forward fold. And we're going to be here for a good few breaths. So get yourself comfortable. Really lean into not only the physical feeling of the stretch, but lean into the emotional, the mental feeling of the stretch. Lengthening the spine. And close your eyes.
inhale coming all the way back up nice ground down through the hands tuck under back toes take it back downward facing dog See how different that feels now in comparison to the left side, but we're gonna get there. So inhale, shift shoulders forwards, find that high plank position again, and then the left foot steps to the outside of the left hand, drop the back knee down, lift the chest. So find that heart lift and that little sway to begin with. Just moving gently side to side. And then if it feels good too, you can bring it down onto the forearms and keep that movement going. Keep checking in. Staying connected to the breath, noticing each inhale and exhale. And then the option to open the left hand up onto the left knee, gaze up to the sky, be mindful that that left ankle does not collapse. And then unraveling, ground down through the hands. Now, tuck under the back toes. We're gonna come to that active pigeon. So bring the left knee in, and the back leg is off. And then fly the arms up to the sky. Take any hand position that you wish. Really lifting up and out of the pelvis. You kind of want this sensation or this mental kind of imagery of lifting your core out of the hips. So reaching all the way up. Trying to square the hips here. One more breath. And slowly release those hands down. Step it all the way back. This time left leg reaches up and we find that three leg dog and start to work around some circles here. So three going in each direction. And going the other way. Engaging the core as you go. And then when you're done with your rotations, bring that left knee through to the left wrist and release it down for pigeon. Inhale, find the length, really lifting through the spine and then exhale, take the forward fold. Again, we're gonna be here for a few breaths. So closing the eyes and just melting down into the stretch. Just like before, being aware of how the pose is working for you emotionally as well as physically. One more breath here. And then starting to walk those hands in, tuck under the back toes, take it all the way back to a downward facing dog. And then start to walk the feet towards the center of the mat and bring the hands to the center of the mat to meet the feet. Take the two peace fingers around the big toes. You can bend the knees here if you need to. Inhale, find length through the spine. Exhale, elbows travel out to the side, forward fold. Shift the weight towards the front of the feet. That's where you're gonna start to feel the stretch intensify. And just make sure there's no tension being held in the neck. Allow the head to hang heavy. And you can take a few undulations here if that feels good. You can inhale and lift. And then exhale, release. A few more breaths here.
on an inhale, come up to the fingertips. Start to heel toe the feet to the outside edges of the mat. Drop the hips down, find Malasana, our yogic squat. Hands come to heart center, lift through the chest. Such a nice way to open the hips, but also neutralize the spine. If you're someone that finds Malasana really hard and your heels are really far off, you can either work it from this point of view, because you're balancing, you're using strength, you're using those hip flexors, the adductors. If not, you can place little blocks or little wedges underneath the feet to allow yourself to kind of melt down into the posture a little bit more. And let's just find a few moments of wiggling side to side. And then bring that bottom all the way down to the mat. Bring yourself to lie back and hug the knees into the chest. Taking a rock side to side. And now you're gonna wrap the right leg over the left knee, take hold of the ankles and just draw those ankles towards you. Now, the further they go out to the side, the deeper you're gonna find this. The closer the ankles are to your body, the slightly easier it will be. But this pose is by no means easy. It's quite a big one on opening through those glutes in the IT band. If you're somebody that doesn't love to close the hip joint, hi, that's me, then this can be quite triggering and it can be, you know, one that you resist quite a lot. And that's okay. We have to work on the things that we resist as well. And then switch the cross. So left leg on top, right leg below. Ooh. Close the eyes, breathing here. Yeah, and then unravel. Let's come to find that happy baby. So taking hold of the outside edges of the feet, knees draw down. And now see if you can notice the difference of how the lower body feels now in comparison to how it felt when we went into happy baby at the start of this practice. So this isn't, the reason I asked you to compare isn't a point of saying like, oh gosh, I was so bad then and I'm so good now. It's really just about awareness in the body. And the more that we can start to notice how movement, yoga, stretching, mobility, how it does such wonders for our body, the moment we start to notice that, then we come to it more and more. So that's the reason that I ask you to kind of check in with that comparison. And also maybe, maybe your hips don't feel good right now. Maybe you open them a little bit too much. And again, something to be really aware of and just be curious about. Okay, hug those knees into the chest. Let's just come down for our final few moments in this practice. Take a Shavasana. Now, your options, you can come into that Baddha variation and continue with the hip opening. If you're like, no, no, I'm done with my hip opening, then may I suggest that you take your feet to the outsides of the mat and you let the knees drop together and therefore you've got that nice squeeze of energy through the upper thighs and also this position just gives your spine, your lower spine especially, a little breather. So whichever position you'd rather be in. Palms of the hands facing upwards. Eyes are closed. Just allow the breath to be soft in the body. Allow the body to be soft. Notice if you're holding tension anywhere. A lot of the time in that little space between our eyebrows, the jaw, maybe open the mouth. Wiggle the eyebrows a little bit. Release that tension there.
So please do stay here for longer if you have the time. If you're ready to move out, just starting to stretch the body, keep the eyes closed and bring yourself up to a comfortable seated position. <sighs> Place one hand on top of the other at the heart center and we'll seal our practice with one releasing breath together. Inhale. Mm, thank you so much for flowing with me and for waking up well with me or whenever you did this flow in the day. Please, please do check out the Soul Sanctuary. I have linked to it below. Um, all the information is there. And if you're doing this as part of the series, then I look forward to seeing you on the mat tomorrow. Bye-bye.